Um, Julie and Betsy, thank you for joining me to talk about Gabby Giffords Won't Back Down, your newest documentary. Um, you focus on a lot of strong women with some of your documentaries, some of my favorites throughout the years, um, Ju uh, Justice Ginsburg being one of them and Julia Childs another. Tell me about finding, not finding Gabby Giffords, but knowing about her story and what compelled you to tell her story. Well, you know, she's such a spectacular person and we knew a little bit about her story. Of course, like all Americans, we remember that tragic day in 2011 when she was shot. We understood that she had recovered to an extent and that she was uh, associated with an organization called Giffords. But until uh, the producer of our film, Lisa Erzbaumer, reached out to us and suggested uh, this subject as a documentary and we got to to meet Gabby over a Zoom and her husband, Mark Kelly, we didn't understand really how extraordinary her story was and how intense and beautiful her journey from a medically induced coma to being unable to walk and talk to who she is now. We just didn't, we, we hadn't known how incredible that journey was and how much of it was documented on videotape. Right. Um, Betsy, can you talk about this a little bit with us? Because Mark is the one who really supplied a lot of this incredible footage of uh, Gabby's recovery. Yeah, early on in the process of, of meeting Gabby and Mark, we discovered that he had set up a camera and a tripod in her room to document her slow recovery. I mean, this was just weeks after the shooting and at a time when people didn't know how much progress Gabby was going to make, but Mark had a lot of confidence. He said, you know, Gabby's going to recover. And when she does, she's going to want to see this because she might not remember what's going on. And it's pretty extraordinary. Uh, so over the next uh, months, he just kept rolling. Uh, it we learned that uh, it, it, the, he was able to do this because uh, as an astronaut, he'd been trained uh, as a cameraman because they uh, learn how to take their own cameras and do their own video up in space. So he had the technical ability and he just had the, I guess, emotional insight and faith uh, to do this. And that sure was lucky uh, for us as documentarians because that, that journey, those weeks and months are uh, pretty illustrative of what it takes to come back from such a devastating injury. And that recovery process is an arduous one to say the least and to have that faith in knowing that your wife is going to recover to the potential that she can reach. Um, one of the things that you really focus upon and as a former speech language pathologist and a daughter who is becoming one and is working in acute care right now, um, you really focus on two of the speech pathologists. Tell me about that focal point and what made you tell the story through that lens. Yeah, you know, it was watching the footage of Gabby Giffords in her early days of the hospital rehabilitation and seeing how key her work with the speech pathologist was on a technical level of relearning language, often relearning it through the music centers of the brain, but also on the human level. You see how her speech pathologist um, in, the, in, in the rehabilitation center in Houston, um, Angie Glenn, you, you just see the two of these women really connecting with each other on a deep, deep level that goes beyond language and then helps the language come out. Um, you know, un unfortunately, you know, with, with everything going on in our world today, um, mass shootings and Gabby Giffords was the target of this mass shooting back in 2011. Um, gun control is, is still something that we are addressing, haven't made a ton of progress at this point. Um, Gabby Giffords, in your documentary, you show how she reaches across the aisle and she is that bridge to bring two sides together no matter what their viewpoints. Um, what are your hopes that people will take away from this movie and maybe move us forward a little bit with where we are with gun control? Yeah, I mean, definitely uh, Gabby, once she had recovered after a couple of years and the horrible Newtown tragedy happened, uh, she saw an opportunity to start an organization and to begin activism that was really trained toward the majority of Americans who believe in reasonable gun safety measures. 
even people who are gun owners or NRA members. I mean, that has been uh, Gabby's focus. And she's been part of a movement that has grown up as these mass shootings have continued. Organizations in every one of these places have started up of bereaved parents and friends and just people who cannot understand why we're allowing this to continue to happen. Um, as we were finishing our film, there was actually some movement toward uh, gun legislation. The first significant uh, bill was passed in nearly 30 years uh, in the wake of the two shootings, the shootings in Uvalde, Texas and in Buffalo. And then of course there was another one in Chicago after that, which uh, has, uh, it's a modest step toward, um, uh, gun legislation, but a very important one. And I think that uh, Gabby and others feel that it can be just the beginning. They, you know, it's not universal background checks, but it is background checks for, for people 18 to 21. Uh, and, you know, Gabby would like to uh, increase that. Uh, you know, they got rid of this, uh, you know, boyfriend <laughs> exception, like just because you're not married to a person uh, uh, doesn't mean that, uh, you know, that, that these kind of protections shouldn't apply for women whose partners are violent. So there was, there was um, uh, you know, a significant step. And I think that Gabby Giffords, her organization and others uh, played a big role in that. Yeah, you know, one thing that Gabby likes to say about her rehabilitation is I put one foot in front of the other, I take one step, and then I take another. And that's really the same approach that she and a lot of the other groups advocating to make some kind of a dent in the gun violence epidemic in our country take. It's, it, it's a small step, but you can't, you know, you can't travel a mile without taking the first few steps. Right. Beautifully put, and doesn't surprise me that that is, is Gabby's attitude and reaction toward all of this. Another thing that is surprising to me, and, and you do this in all of your documentaries, you find humor and heart. Gabby has an overabundance of both of these. I was shocked at finding myself laughing during this movie. I mean, and, and to think about, you know, gun control and mass shootings and rehabilitation, and there was still some humor there. Tell me about finding Gabby's voice and integrating humor into this movie. Yeah, well, Gabby is both a hilarious person, a warm person, a loving person, and a musical person, and all of those traits we wanted to work in to our film. Like, yes, there are serious issues here, but this is just a beautiful human story. It's a comeback story. It's a love story. Um, and because Gabby's around and Gabby loves to sing, especially 80s hits, it's also kind of a musical. Did you have a favorite song? Hmm. Uh, you know, I love all of, I love Gabby's taste in music. We love when she's singing, girls just want to have fun. I think that's actually one of the first times in the film where you do laugh. There's Gabby who's having so much difficulty speaking, but finding it a lot easier to sing. And she and her uh, speech pathologist are just belting out that song and, and having so much fun. It, it, it does, um, it just makes you feel good to, to watch her enjoying her life. And we've had a lot of uh, fun singing with Gabby, mostly off camera. Um, <laughs> but. Um, is there anything, and you two are filmmakers and coming from me, a, a former speech path, is there something that you learned about speech pathology or brain injuries that really you hope other people know and maybe give hope to those who have suffered a stroke or another traumatic brain injury? Yeah, well, one myth that was kind of dispelled from for us uh, by Gabby's speech pathologist and also by her own story is that there's no there's not a cap on progress. Mm -hmm. Like there seems there's a, a lot of people believe like, oh, you know, for a few weeks, you'll get better. And then you're just going to be stuck there. Gabby has continued to make progress over the weeks, months and years following her injury. It's still an ongoing process. She's still doing speech pathologist. Excuse me. She's still doing speech pathology several times a, a week. That's, that's kind of 
part of her job almost is her re continuing recovery. It's 11 years later, she's still fighting to recover and she's still recovering. That's fantastic. It is incredible. The brain is truly a plastic thing that is malleable. Um, and uh, what what is it that, um, what, what organizations, I know she's involved in several organizations, but people who watch this movie are going to say, I want to get involved. I want to support um, whatever organization I can to maybe look at gun, gun violence in a different way or supporting aphasia and recovery for that. What are the organizations that um, people can look into? Well, Gabby's organization, uh, first of all, Giffords is her, her uh, gun safety organization. And then she and her speech pathologist, Dr. Fabi Hirsch, have started and co-founded Friends of Aphasia, uh, you know, which speaks to uh, the, the more than a million people in the country who, who have aphasia, most of them from strokes or other brain injuries other than being shot in the brain. I mean, Gabby, in a way, is one of the lucky 10% who survived such a horrible injury. But there are many, many others uh, who, who can be uh, helped by these or by uh, Friends of Aphasia. Very good. And how can people watch your movie? Um, just, just, sorry, uh, when is this film gonna, when is this uh, piece gonna air? Just so it, we... um, This should air next, or this week will be the printed version and next week or possibly the end of this week will be the uh, television aired part. All right, so our film is in some theaters across the United States now and will be on streaming services uh, soon. If you check on Gabby Giffords won't back down.com, that will give you the latest information on where to find our movie and meet the extraordinary Gabby Giffords. Awesome, very good. Thank you ladies both so much for this incredible interview and in making yet another powerful film about a wonderfully resilient woman.